The Hell 2 is a really nice mod for Diablo 1, which adds a lot of new classes as well as overhauls a lot of stuff. It has new music for the special areas it adds, as well as fresh new items and mechanics, like being able to choose two perks when creating a character. All of these perks have a benefit and a drawback. Most importantly for us though, it provides a good necromancer class, as well as a demonologist and a beastmaster. As a necromancer, you start out with some skeleton archers. At first you can only have a trio of them, but as you find or purchase additional tomes of skeleton archer and continue to level the skill up, the limit increases. At spell level 9, I had 7 archers. The archers are very good minions and deal high DPS. The problem with them is that they're not such a good starter minion. Their AI wants to run away from enemies and they're relatively flimsy, as you would expect. So you're going to need your minion dance in peak form as you walk as fast as you possibly can in circles, trying to keep yourself away from the enemy while your archers shoot them down. This is pretty difficult in the cramped confines of the cathedral. Sometimes you emerge into an area only to be surrounded by enemies, and then you're ducking and weaving for your life. In single player, the game is especially brutal because you cannot leave an area while monsters are aware of you. There's no running back up the stairs or ducking through a town portal. These actions are impossible until combat ends. This makes every battle a struggle, especially early on. Another thing is that the Hell 2 is really true to the original Diablo in single player because areas you clear never respawn. This makes resources incredibly finite. I actually had to abandon my single player necromancer because I reached a point where I was too weak to progress. All I had was skeleton archers and I didn't have enough money, even after collecting and selling everything from the previous levels of the dungeon I cleared to be able to purchase a book of summoned skeleton warrior from Adria in town. So I was completely stuck. This does happen from time to time in Diablo single player, but because the Hell 2 is a fair bit harder than vanilla, I can see this happening quite a lot in single player. For this reason, I decided to give up my single player and start a multiplayer game instead. This allowed me to properly investigate the mod without rolling dead character after dead character. By the time you're able to get a book of Skeleton Warrior, either by purchasing it for a hefty sum of 14,000 gold or finding it in the dungeon, you'll be thoroughly sick of your Skeleton Archer minions. The fight I had with the Skeleton King in single player was pretty ridiculous. It consisted of me basically cheesing the Skeleton King because there was just no way I'd be able to defeat him without a tank of some kind. So I was able to lose him on some tricky obstacles, and then summon Skeleton Archers to kill him. He was so tanky that after a minute or two of watching it, I decided to go and take a dump and make a sandwich, and when I came back he was dead. That's some pretty sweet time management right there. It took me so damn long to get the Skeleton Warrior. I didn't have it until the caves, which is the third biome in the dungeon, and I must have been maybe level 15 or something by then. It is so nice to finally have some kind of tank minion, and the Skeleton Warrior does a great job at that. At first you can only have two of them, but as the spell levels up, the amount increases. At spell level 4, I'm able to have three warriors. I have no idea what the cap is, but at this point in the game I've got a good army of 10 minions and life is pretty good. So as a level 24 necromancer, I've got a pretty good army by this point, as far as ARPGs go. The minions are all very capable, and they're your primary means of fighting. As a summoner class, your offensive spells have a cooldown. Every offensive spell like a firebolt, holybolt, whatever, has a 5 second cooldown on it. This makes using direct damage spells extremely difficult. Support spells and crowd control spells do not have this cooldown, and nor do your minion spells. It's really just there to stop you being an offensive mage, which I don't mind. It annoyed me at first, but I realized that for balancing stuff properly, it does make a lot of sense. It does a great job of making you feel like a summoner rather than a mage with summons. Some other cool things about the mod is you only see items drop that are actually useful for your class. It's not like you're a necromancer and you keep seeing useless stuff for paladins or barbarians getting dropped. Instead, it's always stuff that you can actually use. The items are also all new ones, fresh stuff I'd never seen before. The artwork for these new items is fantastic and blends into the game seamlessly. If I didn't know better, I'd never know they weren't vanilla content. It's all nice necromancy themed stuff too, like skull helmets, bone wands, 
and shields that look like flesh stretched over bone. Some items artwork also seems to come from Diablo 2. Because I just had to know if there was a third minion, I ended up grinding my ass off and reaching level 30. My efforts were rewarded because I got exactly the minion I was hoping for, the bone wing. It's a large skeletal demon thing with wings. Around level 30 it starts dropping or becoming available for purchase in town. It's called the Greater Skeleton and it summons you a very, very strong bone wing minion. The minion has a huge amount of hit points and is good in melee but can also use some magic. It's a great minion. I will not be able to find out if there's a fourth minion. It's just too slow leveling up but I've got my fingers crossed. I'll briefly touch on the Demonologist and Beastmaster. I'm really happy to have these extra summoner options available. The Demonologist starts out with little flying demons which are melee combatants. They're an easier minion to start out with than the skeleton archers because they engage the enemies in melee rather than shooting and retreating, which helps keep you alive. They're honestly very good minions. The next minion you get is the Goat Archer. It takes just as long to get this for the Demonologist as it takes to get the Skeleton Warrior as a Necromancer. Having your own Goatman is really cool. The Goatman Warrior is one of the units that freaked me out as a kid because of its toughness and the strange sound it makes when it attacks. The Goat Archers have a lot more hit points than the Skeleton Archers do, but there's also far fewer of them. I was a little sad that the second minion is the Goatman Archer, not because I disliked them, I actually really like Diablo 1 Goatman, they're one of my favourite monsters, but because I was hoping to get a Succubus instead. The Succubi in Diablo 1 look awesome, and they are hands down my favourite monster in Diablo 1. I won't show them because they're partially naked, I don't think boobs, even 1996 pixel boobs, are okay on YouTube. The third minion for the Demonologist is the Satyr Lord, which is one of the new and incredibly tough demons added by the mod. I think it's a custom creature because I've never seen it before in Diablo, but it could also come from Hellfire, which I've never played until now and still haven't finished. Anyway, it's a Goatman of large stature, with bat wings and a scythe. It's a great minion overall, the only problem with it is its slow walking speed. The Beastmaster starts out with some nasty little bugs called Stingers. They move really fast and stab using their scorpion-like tails. The Stingers use a kind of hit and run tactic, where they like to stab and then back away, then come back to stab again. This causes them to kite enemies around, and can make things very difficult for you early on. Similar to the problem the Necromancer has with his skeleton arches. You'll find yourself running in circles, desperately trying to stay alive, until your stingers can bring the enemies down. Later on the stingers become easier to manage. The second minion the Beastmaster has is the Hell Boar. This creature behaves similarly to a rhino beast monster, or whatever they're called. Those horn demons in Diablo 1 that scream and charge at you, scaring the crap out of you the first time you encounter them. It's a solid minion and a good tank. The third minion the Beastmaster has is the Viper. The Viper is a strong minion, just a big tough old snake with arms and swords. It's worth mentioning that the Beastmaster appears to be the only summoner whose minions are capable of healing themselves, if you choose the right perk at the beginning of the game. This perk gives your minions life leeching attacks. I'm scoring this mod a 9.6 out of 10 for its minion mechanics. I really like everything about how the minions work in this mod. My only complaint is I'd like to see more minion types. For the Necromancer, it'd be really cool to have a Skeleton King type unit on my side, as well as some of the cool new undead types added to the game by this mod, like the Lich. It'd also be really great to get some other undead units to play with as well, if possible. Undead Goatmen would be amazing. As for the Demonologist, I want to see a Succubus minion because I really love Succubi. But because Diablo is a game about fighting demons, there's honestly so many other awesome demons to choose from that could be added as minions. For Beastmaster, a ranged unit of some kind is certainly missing. Maybe some kind of Triffid thing that spits venom, or that really awesome poison vine minion the druid has in Diablo 2, not sure. But something awesome is definitely needed here as well. I'm going to continue playing and leveling up. If I encounter any more minions as I reach level 40 and higher, I intend to do a follow-up video and increase the score to 10. If you're a veteran player of this mod, please let me know if I missed a minion. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video has helped you find something new and awesome to try. I've got more videos on necromancy stuff coming soon.